In this lecture, we're going to focus our attention on a new uh, control structure, and this is going to be uh, condition, conditionals or branching control structures. And conditionals are a construct that we can use in order to control the flow of our applications by allowing for different choices to be made. In this lecture, we'll focus on understanding the structure and purpose of if statements as well as switch statements. And so you want to consider up until now that we've primarily worked with coding constructs in a sequential manner. And so operations and each line of code occurs and executes in order from top to bottom sequentially. So if we have an application that assigns a value of a equals nine, the next, the next instruction will assign a value to b equals six. The next instruction would assign a value to c equals three. And the summation of those values would be assigned to d. And so we'll introduce the concept of branching. And branching allows for us to allow for conditions to occur in the code. And given the condition, we can have a different outcome or different execution that occurs. So a simple branch statement might have some might appear in the following manner. And if the condition that we're testing is yes, we can provide for an, a specific output. If the condition being tested is no, then we can have another alternative output. And then after the branch, the program or the line of execution will continue. So this allows for various options to occur in our coding applications. And so let's consider our original uh, coding construct and we want to incorporate an appropriate uh, scenario. So here we have, we'll incorporate the if statement into our original sequential, uh, a sense of sequential line of code or flowchart. And so here we have the assignments of A equals nine, then B equals six, and C will equal to three. So now we'll come to our branching statement, and this will be in the form of an if statement. We want to evaluate if A is greater than B. And so the outcome of this evaluation is going to be a logical evaluation. So it's either true or false. If it's true, then we're going to assign a new, um, a new value to C. The new value will be 10. If the condition is false, then we'll just proceed with our summation as originally intended. So in this case, we can test our condition and we know that nine is greater than six. So now our new value for C is no longer three. We've reassigned it to be 10. And after the branch, the, pr the programming will continue. And so now the new sum will include nine plus six plus 10 instead of nine plus six plus three. So this is an illustration of how a, a if statement can be used to provide for a different avenues of operations to occur. And so it's important to consider the general format of the if statement in MATLAB. And the general format is we'll have if and then the condition that we're looking to express and then the actions that we're looking to perform if that conditional expression is true. And so we saw this in our previous example where we have our if statement and we want to evaluate if A is greater than B. If it's true, then we have our action that occurs. In this case, it's an assignment of a new value to C. It could be any other operations as well. It could be a print statement. It could be an assignment of a new variable. Uh, whatever your program requires, you're able to construct it in that manner. But with the if statement, you also have the optional else statement that can be used if a condition is false. 
So if we wanted to have the else statement and have another action occur, the else could have that same condition as well. And then to cap off the if construct, you can use a end construct. And so another approach would be if we want to consider uh, displaying a specific message based on a user's age. If we're given a user's age and then we evaluate the condition, if age is less than 18, then we can display a message such as you're too young to vote. But else, meaning that the, the age entered is 18 or greater, then we'll, they'll, we'll display glad to meet you, which basically says that you're able to vote. And of course, you want to consider that the else clause is a optional clause that just as in our previous example, you can just have the if statement alone. So we've been able to outline how to implement the if statement appropriately when A is equal to 9, B is equal to 6, and C is equal to 3, with A being greater than B, C is equal to 10. And so then our if statement would end and we'll, we do our new computation. We can also incorporate our else statement into our previous example. So let's consider we have the inputs, A is equal to five, B is equal to six, and C is equal to three. Our flow of our application has the following flow in that we'll evaluate the condition if A is greater than B. If A is, is greater than B, then we'll assign it a new value of 10 for C. If not, our else statement will assign another value of C to be seven. So if we were to consider this construction in our code, we would have our assignment statements here, and then we would want to evaluate our condition if A is greater than B, then C equals 10, else C is going to equal to seven, and this ends our else statement. But after the branching occurs, the summation operation will still occur, but we have new assignments that are in place for 10 and seven now. We can also make use of another condition called else if, and the else if statement allows for another evaluation to occur if our previous statement is false. And so our else if statement here takes on the form of we have our same program where we've declared or an initialized values for A, B, and C to be 9, 6, and 3 respectively. Now we come to our if condition if A is greater than B. And this is where our branching occurs again. If A is is greater than B to be true, then we have an assignment of C equals 10. But if A is not greater than B, this will be false, and then the program will continue on to our else if block. The else if block says if A is less than B, if that is true, then C is now going to be assigned a value of 20. If this also evaluates to false, then our program continues. Now, it's important to keep in mind that these, this, the branching constructs are determining whether one value is greater than or less than the other. But if both values are the same, so if A is nine and B is nine, then both of these would evaluate to false and the original value of C equals three would hold. And so when we execute our program, we get our output if A is going to equal to 9 and B equals to 6, C is going to equal to 10, 
and then we can introduce our else if here. And then we can also introduce an else to evaluate if either one of these checks do not occur. So with the else, it would override the three. And now we would have a new value of seven that is entered for C. So this is the way that we can construct our program using if keyword, the else if keyword, the else keyword, and again, our n would match with our if statement. Of course, you want to keep in mind that else if and else are optional statements. Another construct that we can use for branching is the switch statement. And just like the if statement, the switch statement allows for us to change the flow of code execution by evaluating a specific value and assigning an action based off of that case value. And so a switch statement will have the format of keyword switch and then we're gonna have a variable that represents the case that we're considering. So in this case, if we have the values of A equals nine, B equals six, and C equals three, we say switch A. This means that we're going to determine our branching based off of whether we have, based off of the value that is being assigned to A. So for case, nine, meaning A equals nine, we're going to assign the value of C equals 10. We have a value for case five, meaning if A is equal to five, we're going to assign a value of C equals 20. If neither of the cases hold, then we're going to assign the value of C is going to equal to 30. And so this incorporates how we can utilize the switch statement for assigning values. We can also consider that the switch statement can also be used in order to accomplish multiple selections. So we can have a switch statement or a case in our switch statement that considers more than one value. And so this is done in brackets. So if we wanted to evaluate whether the value for A is five or two, this is the syntax and format that we would utilize to make that evaluation. So in this case, we see that um, if it is five or two, it would assign the value of C equals 20. Otherwise, C is going to be assigned a value of 30. And so this provides us with an understanding of how we can utilize appropriate uh, if statements, if, else, if, if, else, if, else, and switch statements as well. Let's also work through a few more examples to showcase how we can implement these constructs in MATLAB. So let's consider if we again have our if statement. And here we have our values of A equals nine, B equals six, and C is equal to three. So we want to evaluate if A is greater than B. If that is true, we're gonna assign a value of C is going to equal eight. And so in this case, it evaluates to true because nine is, greater than six. And so our output for, for displaying the value of C is eight. So if we were to evaluate our program again and evaluate for if A is greater than B, six is not greater than six, it is equal to it. And so now the value still remains as being three in this case. We could correct this by incorporating a conditional to match if it is 
equal to. And in this case, it would, would provide an assignment of eight. But that depends on the, the logical logic that you need for your program. Now we can also evaluate and incorporate if else statements in. So in this example, we consider our values of A, B, and C. And we consider if A is greater than B, then we're gonna make up an assignment of C equals eight. Else we're gonna do an assignment of C equals nine. Depending on the execution, or the evaluation will display what the new value is going to be. And so in this case, the value is going to be nine because 555 is not greater than 777. So it's important to note that this does not, um, the value for three is going to be overwritten no matter uh, what because it's either going to be assigned a value of eight or it's going to be assigned a value of nine. Now we can also incorporate the else if in our scenario. So in this case we have our values of c equals three, a equals one, and B equals seven. And so we want to apply for, apply an evaluation if A is greater than B. If it is, then we're gonna say C equals eight. Else if, if a, else if A equals to B, then we're gonna make the assignment that C equals nine. And so when we run this portion, we have an unrecognized function or variable for C. So we need to redeclare that. And so in this case, what we see is C is going to equal to eight or C is going to equal to nine, but for either one, it did not match. And so the value for C of equal to three remains the same. So you will notice that we did not have, we got an, unrec an unrecognized flag initially when we had clear here. And so that is because C has not been declared. And so within our if statement, it's considered to be out of scope. And so if you declare a variable in an if statement, once the end ends, if it was not declared globally, it, would, it will not persist after the branching statements have ended. And so that is an important thing to keep in mind when you're constructing your programs and incorporating appropriate uh, branching mechanisms. So let's also consider if we have Ill, if, else if, else statements. In this example here, we'll have our variables being defined as A equals 13, B equals to 14, and C equals to three. And we want to evaluate the condition of whether A is less than B if, it is, if this evaluates to true, then we're gonna assign the value of C equals eight. We'll display a simple message, hello. And then we're going to assign a value of F is equal to 78. We can also incorporate an else if statement and our else if evaluation will evaluate if A is greater than B. If it is, then we're gonna have C is going to equal to nine. And our last construct is going to be an else, meaning that if the if statement evaluates to false and the else if statement evaluates to false, then we're still going to apply a value of 10 to our C variable. 
And so when we go to execute this section, we'll see that the value, the evaluation is A less than B is going to evaluate the true because 13 is indeed less than 14. And so that allows for us to display, to make the assignment and display hello. And then our value in variable C is also displayed. But what would happen if we wanted to display the value in the value of F? So if we copy and we want to display the value of F, the value of F gets displayed as 78 here. So let's also consider uh, an additional else if. So in this example, we have the example of A is going to equal to 14 and B is going to equal to 14 as well. And we want to compare the values of A is less than B. And so if it is, then we will have C equals eight. And then we can also do our additional assignments. We'll display hello and F equals 78. And then we have an else if, if A is greater than B. If that evaluates to true, then C equals nine. And then we have another else if, else if, if A equals to B, then C equals 10. And so that assignment can occur. And then we could also add an additional else as well. And so if we were to test this out as is, the value in C is going to be 10 because 14 does equal 14. But if we wanted to compare and see, let's say if, well, really we would need to get rid of this. So we could say else. And that provides us with the value of 10 instead of using an additional else if. So it might be when would be a good time for us to incorporate uh, multiple else if is, mo multiple else if statements uh, instead of just uh, if else if and else. Well, this will depend on the logic that you need to use in constructing your program. So let's say we wanted to evaluate um, both components for if A is greater than B, if A is less than B, as well as C. So we could say, have logic that say, or C is greater than A here. So this would evaluate if A is less than B or C is greater than A. So if we go to evaluate this, A is 14 and B is 14. So it's not less than C is three, but C is not going to be greater than 14. So this does not evaluate the true. Here we have if A is less than B, if A is greater than B, and we can say, and C is less than A to provide for a complex logic for our else if. Then we could also say else if A is equal to B and C is greater than A. In this case, 
we would evaluate if A is equal to B and C is greater than A. So when we go to evaluate this new logic, and we can do an else as well, C equals 100. So when we go to do this new evaluation for our logic, we get appropriate uh, values that C is going to now equal to 100 because our complex comparisons uh, do not hold for each one for the if statement, it evaluates to false. For the else if statement, it also evaluates to false. And for our second else if, it also evaluates to false as well. If we did not incorporate our additional else here, then we would get an evaluation that evaluates to the value in variable C holding at three. So these are some additional ways in which we're able to incorporate additional logic into our, our applications to evaluate specific conditions. And so you can do also more complex comparisons as well, where we're going to compare if A is going to equal to maybe a multiple of um, the value in B. We can compare if uh, A is less than negative B. We can also use an else if to compare if A is going to equal to B. And if none of these conditions hold, then we can provide or another assignment of else C is going to equal to 45. So really the benefit of this is that we can incorporate some additional logic to determine uh, the conditions that we need to meet in order to solve a given problem. So when we run this code, if A, does A, which is 99, equal the values that we have here, two times B, B is seven, so is A equal to 14? No, 99 does not equal to 14. Is 99 less than negative seven? That's gonna be a false. Does 99 equal to seven? That's gonna be a false as well. And so in this case, our evaluation holds to 45. So we could do some more comparisons and say, let's say if we have A is equal to 14. So now if we were to run this, now our first if statement will evaluate to true because we are able to evaluate to determine that A, which is 14, does equal to two times 14. And so in this case, we have a new value that is assigned to eight. We could also incorporate some additional logic and that we could compare if, we can incorporate an additional else if, where we want to see is B less than A. C is going to equal to Let's say C equals to 100. So what happens when we try this logic out here? Okay, so let's walk through step by step and see what happens here. We have the value of C equals, if A equals to two times B, C is going to equal to eight. That is true because 14 does equal to seven times two, which is 14. We know that 14 is not less than negative seven. We know that 14 doesn't equal to seven. Here we have is 14, is seven uh, less than 14. That evaluates to true. Well, why doesn't it update our var variable for C? And that is because one in our if statement, once this evaluates, once one condition evaluates to true, we go to the end. So if we were to change this, 
to three times B. This now becomes false, false, false. And now our last ELSIF evaluates to true and the value of C is now going to be equal to 100. So these are some of the different ways in which we can incorporate and compare how if statements and else if and else statements are utilized with complex logic.